Welcome to your weekly airplane news update. This is the week of February 22nd, 2021. This week I got three topics and I'm sure you've heard of at least one of those, maybe possibly all three of them, well, actually probably two of them. Uh, the first one is the 777. This week that had some issues from United Airlines over Colorado. We'll talk about what happened and kind of what came out of it, uh, especially from a, from a training standpoint. Uh, we'll talk about sectional charts. The, uh, uh, the way that they are going to be renewed is changing. This is important, especially if you're a student and, and, and an active pilot, I should say. Uh, and then the last one, we'll talk about some aircraft on Mars. So let's get started. And this week you may notice a slightly different look. So we have created a new background for uh, all of our news updates. Uh, just a little refresh so you guys don't have to stare at the green screen all the time and on front of which uh, I do all the courses. And uh, this is a little bit more cozy. I'm still working on the lighting a little bit, but uh, I, I like it so far. So let me know what you think about it in the background. Um, First thing I want to talk about this week is the 777 from uh, United Airlines. So this was United 328. They were on their way from uh, Denver to Honolulu when they had an issue. They were at 12,500 feet, four minutes after takeoff, and they hear a loud bang, and then all of a sudden, here goes the engine. Um, the Pratt & Whitney engine fracture, uh, failed completely because of a, uh, a fracture in one of the blades in the engine. And uh, that apparently is because of uh, metal fatigue based on what the uh, preliminary inspection has released. You can see a picture in the background right here of the damage done to the engine, the damage done to the cowling actually of the engine or that area, it's called a wing to body fairing, which is between the wing and the body in itself, how the wing is attached to the aircraft. And, um, you know, they, they have a fire extinguisher system on board of the engine. So that was fired up. They have two different bottles, it, it looks like, on that aircraft. And then the fuel supply was shut off. But still, from the videos that you see from the passengers here in the background, you can see that uh, the, there was still a fire going. So uh, not, not a minor thing, quite frankly. This is pretty rare. We, we really haven't seen too many of these things in the last uh, even decade, I would say, at least in the U.S. And uh, the aircraft landed safely. Every Everyone was fine. Uh, a lot of people have been asking, you know, how this must have felt from the cockpit. And, and my guess, I'm not a 777 captain, but uh, my guess is that this is exactly what they train for. Okay, This is why they go through all this training and follow the checklist and then just come back. So uh, a lot of professionalism right here for uh, from these guys to land that aircraft. Everybody on board was safe. And uh, on Tuesday, so soon after this happened on Thursday, I think, uh, on Tuesday of this week, which was yesterday based on when I'm recording this video, uh, the FAA issued an emergency AD uh, for the Pratt & Whitney engine. It's the PW4000 that's on the 777. This is a 777-200. And uh, they require an inspection before any new flights are going to happen on these engines. So uh, they're looking, uh, in this case, they're using uh, an equipment called a thermal acoustic image in order to look at the the blades those are titanium blades and uh, they're going to be inspecting these blades and making sure everything is safe so uh, the reason i mentioned this obviously because this was kind of a big deal but from a training standpoint uh, we talk about emergency ad if you're in my course i'm sure if you're in other courses uh, you learn about emergency ad's and they happen once in a while but this is a perfect example right here of when this would happen something pretty drastic happens and then um, and then obviously uh, the aircraft are grounded until further inspection. So that's it. That's all I have for this story. Next one I want to talk about is uh, important for people that are actively flying, that are using sectional charts or VFR charts, I should say. Uh, the FAA is changing the way that these are updated. You know, until now, until actually tomorrow, which is the 25th of February, uh, charts have been updated every six months. This is changing to every 56 days. Uh, the, the chart supplement is updated every 56 days. Now the FAA is going to do that as well for uh, the VFR charts. This affects sectional charts, terminal area charts, VFR flyway charts, and then the helicopter route charts as well. So everything will be updated every 56 days. Here's the kicker. A lot of charts that were issued before this happened are going to expire even before the date that they were actually uh, supposed to expire. So if you bought a sectional and it says that it's supposed to expire in, I don't know, uh, sometimes in March or in April, 
uh, that's no longer the case. So you can see right here, I'm putting the list of all of the new charts that are being updated early. So starting, uh, they will be issued on February 25 and they will be good until uh, 56 days later, which is the date that you see right here. Uh, I'm going to put a link down here to the PDF that contains that information. So always, always, always make sure that you're flying with the most recent chart. And this is kind of a reminder, you know, charts were updated every six months, so you had to make sure it was good every six months. Now you have to really make sure that you, your, your charts are updated. Uh, the reason I think they're doing this, I actually haven't read the reason, but I'm going to guess, uh, is just that the FAA really wants to make sure that uh, there's been a lot of changes and the FAA wants to make sure that they're all published. Hopefully this reduces the amount of notams that are being issued uh, to make changes to publish uh, charts. So we'll find out, we'll see what happens. Uh, but that's uh, 56 days, put that in your thing. If you're in part of our course, that will be updated in the course as well. So you will, uh, you'll be able to see that. The last thing I want to talk about is uh, is Mars. Mars was in the news. We have a, a rover. It's called a per Perseverance rover that landed on Mars on uh, on Thursday, and uh, it took 203 days to get there. I don't remember how many billions of miles it did, but that was quite a few. And um, and on landing, it actually is equipped with a what the FAA calls a helicopter. Uh, I actually don't like that term because it's not really a helicopter. A helicopter is a manned aircraft, right? This is a, a remote, this is an autonomous drone, actually this is a drone, this is a UAS, unmanned aircraft system. So I'm gonna call it a UAS just because uh, this is what we teach also at uh, Pilot Institute. So so this UAS is pretty cool, it's pretty small uh, because, uh, because, well, it needs to take off. And as you know, the atmosphere is different in Mars, not nearly as dense as it is in the in on Earth. I was going to say in the U.S. Uh, on Earth, and um, and and this thing has two propellers. They're they're counter rotating propellers, and uh, and they're able to carry that small weight underneath the aircraft. And the idea here is they're they're doing testing. They really want to see what a motorized flight looks like on Mars, and uh, and and they're going to do a couple flights. The first flight is just going to be basically taking off, hovering, and then coming back down. And then uh, they're expected to do at least five flights. Hopefully they can do five flights and everything goes well, just to capture some, some aerodynamic data for uh, how this goes. So uh, we'll see more of those, I'm sure, more of these kind of devices in the future uh, for sp space exploration. But imagine not having to roll on the planet and instead just being able to, uh, to fly and capture much more data. Uh, we know that drones are being used for a ton of different applications from mapping, from doing inspections, from, from obviously taking pictures. Uh, with all different types of sensors. So uh, this has a ton of potential. Uh, in combination, I, there is no better combination, I think, than a rover on the ground capturing uh, data, soil data, and then this thing that can fly and capture uh, additional information. So that's it. This is really all I have for you guys this week. Um, as always, like, subscribe, leave a comment. I love uh, interacting with you guys. And then if you're looking for drone information, we also have a weekly drone news update that we do. Uh, we're getting close to 100 episodes actually of that. So we've been doing that for a while. And, uh, and this week I'm talking about the new FPV drone. If you don't know what an FPV drone is, a drone that you can fly using goggles. And this is kind of a big deal for the industry right now. DJI, the largest manufacturer of drones, is coming up with uh, a model. So we're talking about this. Uh, we're also talking about a recreational exam for drone pilots, which uh, the FAA has been promising for a while. People that fly their drones, even for fun, will have to take an exam going forward. So if you want more information on that, uh, find the link down there and uh, or up here and then uh, go and, uh, and listen to me talk about some more aviation stuff. So that's it. That's all I have uh, for this week. I'll see you guys next week. And in the meantime, fly safe.